Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News on the R. I am Ebulomo Adekunle. The Independent National Electoral Commission has met with the leadership of all the registered parties with a view to keeping them informed on preparations for next month's election. The Commission also used the opportunity to listen to concerns of party leaders in the run-up to the elections. Many of them held INEC's preparation preparedness but want INEC to be categorical in rejecting calls for elections to be postponed. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission has charged all 37 resident electoral commissioners to remain focused on ensuring credible elections next month. He said this shortly before holding a closed-door meeting with the electoral commissioners in Abuja. Jega implored them not to lose focus in the face of attempts by politicians to drag the commission into disrepute. I have said consistently what we need to do is to remain focused and to busy ourselves in terms of ensuring that the 2015 general elections are remarkably much better than the 2011 general uh, elections. And uh, we have to continue to ensure that whatever we do, uh, we remain impartial and nonpartisan and that we create a level playing field for all parties, all candidates and all contestants. Uh, we need to reassure Nigerians that we are ready to conduct free, fair, credible and peaceful elections uh, in the 2015 general elections. Uh, but we also need to reassure ourselves that indeed we are ready uh, for the business uh, ahead of us. The European Union plans to deploy 90 election observers to monitor next month's elections in Nigeria. It will, however, not send any team to observe voting in the northeast due to security concerns. The head of EU's election observation mission in Nigeria, Santiago Exila, disclosed this at a meeting with the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Muhammad Buhari, in Abuja. The EU team held a closed-door meeting with the leadership of APC's Presidential Campaign Council the before European briefing journalists on the mission outcome. It's a big mission. It's a mission that starts in November and it will be in place until mid-April. Then it's not only uh, the problem what happens on the electoral day, it's what happened during all the big space of time, how the primaries has been done, uh, how is respected the law, how respected, I will say, the uh, propaganda, the media, and also afterwards any possible claim after elections. And that is our role, not just to follow up the day of election. It will be impossible in a country so big with so many inhabitants as has uh, Nigeria to cover everything. And I can tell you that we are the mission more important, the biggest mission that there is in all the world for this election and for any other election. And for the Northeast, of course, we can't be there for security reasons, obvious security reasons. But anyhow, we have people deployed very close to the Northeast, and we have contacts there the, on this area, and then we try to have the better information as we can have on the northeast but the present situation don't allow us to go to the northeast they have been covering other countries elections although not uh, exactly similar to our own country uh, they are very experienced people they are qualified to come for this supervision and uh, as you observe they cannot cover all the 120 or 150,000 polling units but they have placed people in strategic places to advise them. As controversies trail a recent proposal by the National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki on the shift of the February polls, the APC has lent its voice to the call by the American government that on no account must the February date of the polls be shifted. 
The National Publicity Secretary of the nation's leading opposition party, Lai Mohamed, met with senior journalists in Lagos where he made known, point blank, that the party is standing by the February date of the elections, the report. Bedlam had been raised last weekend in London. The innocent-looking Nigerian national security adviser, Sambo Dasuki, had a Chatham House lecture drop the bombshell which he claimed was a mere proposal. Of shifting this thing and doing it when everybody has a car, because it doesn't cost you anything, it's still within the law and it is safer for all of us. Uh, so that, that is what we are encouraging. This, however, did not ring the right chords in the ears of many. First, the American government, which came visiting to advise against tempering with the timetable of the elections. It's absolutely critical that these elections be conducted peacefully, that they are credible, transparent, accountable, so that the people of Nigeria can have faith and the world can have faith in the government that flows from it. Then the APC, whose National Publicity Secretary, La Mohammed, met with senior journalists in Lagos on Monday. He did not waste time to articulate the party's position on the issue. Our party, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, strongly rejected the call by the National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, for the postponement of next month's general elections. Ostensibly, to give more time to INEC to distribute the permanent voters cards. In spite of this, we have noted with dismay that the United administration has continued to pursue the plot to shift the elections. So where lies the worry for the APC if the election body had indicated its readiness to stand by the February 2015 date? When President Goodluck Jonathan met with the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, on Sunday here in Lagos. The president said he told a visiting U.S. top diplomat that the May 29th Andover date is sacrosanct. We say this is not reassuring enough. And that for us, the February 14th and 20th dates for the elections are sacrosanct as the Andover date of May 29th. 2015. All possible reasons, including the ongoing insurgency in the Northeast and growing frustration over the collection of permanent voters' cards, and not in the words of ABC national spokesman, even though to around the postponement of the elections. We are aware of the limitless, the limitless capacity of the PDP and the administration for anti democratic and desperate actions in pursuit of selfish motives that have nothing to do with the interests of the good people of Nigeria. We are aware of the clandestine moves, including reaching out to various interest groups and hiring talking heads to make the television runs being made by this administration to, de to get the elections shifted. The general administration's apologies are hiding under the facade that millions of Nigerians will be disenfranchised if the elections should proceed as scheduled, as scheduled. Again, they are using the terrorist attacks in some parts of the North to advance the election shift ag argument. We sincerely hope that the recent escalation of the Boko Haram attacks and the siege of Maiduguri on Sunday, a day after President Jonathan's uh, cam campaign in the city, are not connected to this campaign. So how really ready is APC for the poos under the present situation? APC is ready for the elections, and under no circumstance will we accept a postponement. For us, February 14th and 20th are sanctioned as May 29th, the handover date. The government has had four whole years to prepare for this election. And the dates for these elections were announced over a year ago. Therefore, there's no excuse, there's no going back now. The Dasuki Chatman House bombshell in Lagos may have let many Nigerians pondering over where the hands of the clerk are swinging ahead of the elections. 
The PDP presidential campaign rally on Monday hit Kwara State, where President Goodluck Jonathan promised residents of the state and the nation's youth freedom from autocratic leaders, in addition to do more and give dividends of democracy he voted in, uh, in for another four years. The PDP also conversed votes for the party's governorship candidate in the state, Samuel Ajibola. Rashid Rashid has the details. In continuation of his quest for another term in office, President Guma Jonathan received a rousing welcome from the mammoth crowd amidst pomp and ceremony. The coordinator of the Good Luck campaign team in Kuala Dele Belgore opened the floodlights of comment, but not without taking a swipe at the APC led government in the state. Kuala State is a state with two governors. One who is merely occupying the seat and has no powers. One who has no constitutional powers but exercises all the powers. That is the state in which Guara State is. It's the state in which the commonwealth of very many have been monopolized and enjoyed by a few. The PDP chieftains on the campaign entourage appear to know for sure that Guara State is a big battleground for the party. Obviously, the rivalry between the PDP and the APC in the state remains at a hiatus level. Thus, they call on the people of Kwara to massively vote for Jonathan. We do not want some old people with fossilized ideas to come and ask for a vote to the president of Nigeria. And we will not allow anybody to rig us out. Those who are pretending to be advocating a free vote are indeed using a small screen. Behind the scene, they want to rig election. Jonathan, who drew his speech from the campaign mantra of the Quara PDP, simply promised freedom and more dividends of democracy to the people. We will want to work with you to make sure that Nigerians are free citizens. We don't encourage a situation where leaders will intimidate the followers, where people will be living as if they are, they are in a zoo and the lions and the leopards are moving freely. And the other lambs and the dogs have to go into hiding. No, that is not a country. Nigeria is not a zoological garden. Nigeria is not a forest. Nigeria is not a country that will be governed by laws and conventions. As presidential campaigns move from state to state with candidates presenting their manifesto, the day of decision beckons where Nigerians will have the chance to vote for the candidates of their choice. But before that day, it is no more news. And no doubt that serious canvassing conflicts is actually going on on both sides of the political divide. Rashid Rashid, OTV News, Ilori. The All Progressives Congress has revealed plans to do away with all forms of dichotomy in all aspects and sectors in the country. The party's vice presidential candidate, Yemi Oshibaju, made this known at an interactive discourse with a cross-section of Nigerian youths organized by an affiliated political group. Act now. The country's leading opposition party emphasized on promoting national unity as well as tackling the problems of policy implementation. Basiaye has more from Oshibajo's interface with Nigerian youths. This is a meeting with APC youths that was organized by Act Now, a political group affiliated with Nigeria's leading opposition party. The group says its membership across the country has a mandate to contribute about 10 million votes to the party's presidential candidate, Muhammadu Buhari. It was a gathering which provided another platform for the opposition to sell its manifesto to the people, especially young Nigerians. And that is exactly what its vice presidential candidate did, with focus on reforms in all sectors, including the public sector. When looking at the current re reforms, even the current reforms, it really comes down to even implementing current reforms. For us, downsizing and right-sizing isn't priority at all. That's not priority. Because really we believe that we, we can train public servants well. There are those who say that there are too many, but we believe that the size of the public service is not even as important as what they are able to do and whether you deploy them correctly. He also addressed the issue of election rigging and manipulation. One of the key things that we find in any successful election is that the people themselves must be there at the polling booth, count the votes, record the figures. 
if the figures are being manipulated at the at the collation of centers, that's a different issue. That's up to the agents of the parties. But the most important point is at the polling point. And when people want a change, when people want their own, when, when they want to deliver themselves, they remain there. And that's the kind of thing we're saying to, the, to, our, to our people. That's the kind of thing we're saying to voters. That remain at the polling booth. Make sure your votes are counted. Make sure your votes count. Political campaigns are indeed heating up with parties jostling for recognition. But analysts maintain that power truly rests with the people in the end. Basi Aye, Core TV News, Abuja. It's the Core TV News on the hour. We'll go on a short break and return with more stories. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Many thanks for being there and for more news and other information you can visit our social media platform. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. On Twitter, it's Core TV News NG. And on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Core TV, the space then news. The Lagos State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress has taken its campaign for the governorship election to Moshin local government area with a call on the people by the state's governor, Babatunde Fashala, to shun violence. Kazim Kasale's report on the rally is presented from our studio. With the crowd waiting anxiously for his arrival and that of the governorship candidate of the APC, Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola expectedly remains a darling of Lagosians. He said to draw cheers from the crowd. The consolidator, the actualizer, and 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 the consolidator, the actualizer. Speaking on the forthcoming election, Fashola charged residents of Mushi to vote for continuity and excellence in governance. He says that Kimu Miyambodi is a symbol of continuity and continuous development for Lagos while urging them to eschew violence. Are you not voting for your prosperity and for your development? Now, if you fight and God forbid you lose your life, will you be alive to witness the prosperity? You want to be alive, Abi? You are already witnessing this prosperity. Seven years ago, let me just give you some examples. Just look behind you here. This traffic light. Was it here seven years ago? What does it do? Does it not help to manage traffic? The APC governorship candidate Akimu Miyambode described himself as a homeboy in Mushi and claimed to understand the evolving challenges of the area. He promises to revitalize the economy of Mushi and ensure that real peace reign in the area with the creation of a community watchers group. What is most important right now is for us to create an enabling environment for every one of you to be able to do whatever it is you are doing successfully and more comfortably. We have made Lagos to be safer in the last eight years. We will make it more secure so that we have a 24-7 economy, you can move around any time of the day and Mushin will become safer. He urged the people to get their PVCs and ensure that they protect their votes. The Lagos PDP has gone beyond its town hall meeting to flag a full campaign for the party's governorship candidate in Lagos, Jimmy Agbaji. Uluashe Yadigoke was at the Airways Ground Ikeja in Lagos where the campaign took place and filed in this report. Amidst fun and celebration, the campaign was attended by party chieftains and faithful, all in support of their governorship candidate, Jimmy Agbaje. 
The chairman of Lagos PDP, Tunji Shele, says the PDP is a party to beat in the state this time around. They will ensure that our children have opportunities to grow and to be able to have jobs. The most important thing is that they are ready to work, they are ready to serve, and they are ready to make a difference in the lives of the people of Lagos. Lagos PDP Chieftain Bode George says the real change the ruling party in Lagos is clamoring for will come from PDP. That has led to nowhere. Today, if it is not Balatinuru, he will be his wife as a senator, he will be his daughter as a young mother. How can he give his the whole family? Lagos has been mortgaged. We will not allow them to go away stealing our vote again. Another party chieftain, Musili Wabanikoru, admits he is in a better position to tell Lagosians who is right to govern Lagos. When I was a council chairman, I hope I was a council treasurer. Man of the moment, Jimmy Agbaje described his ideas as the best to move the state forward. We are not afraid of selling our ideas. We are showing them everywhere we have gone that those that are there today have not given us value for money. That they have spent over four trillion naira. There is no value for money. The Lagos PDP urged the people to vote for Agbaje at the forthcoming elections. With just few days to the 2015 general elections, different platforms are not relenting efforts at engaging candidates seeking electoral offices on their vision for the people. Olaju Mokheo Latunji was at the Ogun political debate for candidate in Ogun, West Senatorial District, organized by the Nigerian Union of Journalists. The report. As part of the functional roles of the media in the society, which includes serving as watchdog and bridging the gap between the government and the citizens area, the Ogun State Council of the Nigerian Union of Journalists deemed it fit to engage the Ogun West Senatorial candidates of all the political parties and their manifestos for the district. However, only two of the candidates showed up for the debate. This did not in any way dampen the atmosphere as B. E. Otegbeye, representing the Social Democratic Party, engaged Orisha B. E. of the Labour Party. They are yearning for SDP development. I believe, I, I also learned that our people are craving to be given opportunities. And that is why I have set out as a personal agenda to provide them with those opportunities. I intend actually to develop what I have started on that BOT initiative by establishing in all the world's citizen opportunity centers that are going to focus on creating employment opportunity for our people. Positive impact on the majority of our people in the West and Nigeria in general. Closely related to lawmaking is performance of lobbying functions, which on its own is a professional profession recognized by the law of the land. Hence, the availability of a body of professionals known as lobbyists in the developed democracies. The debate may not have fulfilled its full potentials. The fact that he kicked off received commendation from some members of the audience who are confidently looking up to the elections. 
And now outside Nigeria, a Turkish court has ordered Facebook to block a number of pages deemed insulting to the Prophet Muhammad, threatening to stop access to the whole social networking site if it does not comply. The order made by the court on Sunday followed a request by a prosecutor. It was the latest move to crack down on material seen as offending religious sensibilities in the largely Muslim nation, where the government of President Tayyip Erdogan is, been, is seen pursuing an Islamist-leaning agenda. And that's it on the news for this hour. Do join us again top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching. I am Ebu Lomo Adikuli.